Hello, everybody. Welcome to another another episode of Director or Jeremy B. Um, <laughs> for sure, we want to welcome it. Working, uh, working joke or running, jo running title, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, can't make up my mind about the. Yeah, I probably never will. It's 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 a personality, a personality you do anyway. Um, I'm glad you're all here to come out. Uh, this is probably going to be my first true opinion uh, episode. I guess that's not really accurate. Like I do list reviews, and those are all opinions of. of uh, of my list reviews, but when it comes to like abstract uh, theory crafting for how to play uh, Age of Sigmar, this is more of an opinion piece than I think my other episodes basically. Uh, you know, I try to steer away from making, uh, you know, specialized material for specific armies or so forth uh, outside of the list reviews, but when it comes to, you know, how to play the game and win the game, I'm trying to keep it as basically wide ranging as I possibly can. Uh, in this case, this is still pretty wide-ranging, but it is an opinion of how to maximize battle tactics. Um, most players I, I, I know come to me uh, and ask me questions about how to you know, pick their battle tactics, but it's usually around designing the army list and how to maximize scoring them. Not necessarily what you actually have to do in the table, because the sequencing of battle tactics is super important. But you have to have an understanding of how the game is going and what your opponent's or what your opponent's army's potential is doing, especially in preventing battle tactics. Um, one of the big, especially nowadays, I, and this is the reason why I'm putting this video out there, is because of armies like Corn with Murderlust. Murderlust is like a, I think the penultimate right now mechanic in the game that basically kind of uh, really you know takes newer players or even you know somewhat veteran players by surprise. And you know, canceling out their battle tactics. But uh, other than you know, understanding what your opponent's army does, uh, and understanding what your battle tactics can, you know, how they work and how can you maximize them, you also have to obviously make list decision uh, or list making decisions to maximize the potential. But we won't really go too far into this, epi to this episode about that. I've covered it in some of the other list reviews, especially for specific armies I'm playing, I'm playing or have designed, mostly because. <laughs> you have to design armies around battle tactics. <laughs> it's just really the reality. But in terms of like in-game decision making, uh, there is. Uh, it won't be a very long episode, but it's going to be about once again to reinstate my opinion. I don't want to be flamed personally <laughs> for basically still being told I am. No, that's not how you're supposed to do. It. This is just my school of thought about how you approach battle tactics. Uh, first thing first. Uh, deployment. <laughs> Most players I've noticed uh, who kind of put themselves in a corner, uh, they're deploying really focused on not necessarily their overall game plan, uh, but they're focusing on like, okay, I need to make sure I concentrate on my buffs, all my powers, you know, make sure all my cap and my benefits are on range. Then I also have to kind of ask, you know, more veteran players will ask like, what's my What's your, you know, what's, to their opponent, what's your threat range? How far can you reach? And so forth, make gauges. And then they'll like start the game and forget, like, oh, crap, I put like the JC I needed uh, to do cunning maneuver on <laughs> too far away from the one objective that is physically actually, actually outside of my deployment zone. It turns out like there's a lot of missions where um, that's, especially in the new missions, where that can be challenging uh, in terms of doing, even doing cunning maneuver. So, Unless your book tactic has a very easy battle tactic you can do first one, first turn, it's probably gonna your focus is gonna be probably cutting maneuver, because it's easy, but also because it sets the pace. Uh, one of the, you know, one of the big things about how battle tactics does to get the you know you should be I pick my battle tactics is I try to pick the first turn, cunning maneuver because I don't want to give up two points immediately at right at the gate. But also because most often, most often than not, all the other battle tactics at my at my uh, you know arsenal are too risky to actually succeed on. And then there's the other really easy ones that you know certain armies can just achieve outside of cunning maneuver, like desecrate because they're fast or because they have teleportation mechanics. I don't recommend doing desecrate on turn one if you can avoid it as much as possible. It is such an important battle tactic for the later half of the game. 
when you're finding yourself in the dying throes of potentially, you know, small limited resources left on the table, as well as your opponent, uh, so which makes desecrate a lot easier to score. But like, and you're sitting in a situation where you don't, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pop up the, all the all the battle tactics uh, here we go. Uh, that so from this GHB. Now, obviously, not all the faction ones. Uh, desecrate is one you want to save for. Uh, you know, as long as possible, maybe turn four, turn five. I see some cases that people use Desecrate turn uh, turn one because they either screwed up their um, JC deployment or because they forgot to check what the which objectives are actually fully outside of uh, the deployment zone. Because I'll reread uh, Cunning Maneuver. I think it's a nuance people sometimes forget. And even you as your um, opponent, uh, I, sorry. And uh, we'll pause there. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, so, uh, rereading a cunning maneuver. Uh, pick one friendly Galatian champion on the battlefield that is more than three inches from all enemy units. You complete this battle tactic if at the end of the turn that Galatian champion is more than three inches from all enemy units and that contesting objective you control that is wholly outside your territory. That is, like, people forget that last part of that battle tactic quite often. So, you need to make sure um, that, you know, if you're Gonna pick cutting maneuver. <laughs> you need to position your JCs in a way to reach an objective that's outside your deployment zone. Um, but going back to the desecrate piece, you know, I think I'm, it's a pretty good case of why you should save desecrate for as long as possible, unless there's no other option. The only other kind of easy battle tactics you can score is threat, and this is not necessarily first turn. Actually, almost impossible usually to score first turn. Uh, is eye for an eye, uh, and uh, you know this one's mine. Or uh, <laughs> a matter of honor is almost. Inc I mean, I, I, I rarely ever pick that battle tactic. I've rarely ever gotten to use it. It's it's actually quite good. I even built lists around swarm protectors to so use and maximize it. But it's honestly like it's still such a risk in some cases that I don't even bother uh, taking it. Um, but you know, so what am I trying to say? Fundamentally, you're supposed to evaluate your battle tactics. As not only where how easily achievable they are, but also when in the game will they be easily achievable? And I know that's hard to do it in the middle of a game, especially right outside of the game. Not and, it's, and, it's, and not even knowing like how your opponent really army really plays. But you know the path to victory is about so you know this is you know, you know, tree mapping it basically. Book tactic, one of your book tactic, if they're super easy to achieve, turn one. Uh, if not, then cunning maneuver, if you can. But you have to keep very consciously on which mission, like certain missions that like, you don't have the ability to do cunning maneuver uh, at all. <laughs> so you take your opponent's objective. So uh, be very careful of that. So focus on your book tactic first. Turn two onwards. This is when turn two just opens up completely your, your range of battle tactic options uh, because now it's depending on if you know the sequence you know, where you were in the top bottom turn whatever uh, it opens up eye for an eye which is a very good turn two one it opens up gain momentum which is probably the best turn two it's m the more likelihood you'll do gaining momentum is on turn two and maybe turn three but the best likelihood is turn two and think about it this way um, on turn two if you were basically bottom of turn, uh, sorry, top of turn one, and going into turn two, you can basically almost guarantee that you have the resources to retake an objective or objectives away from your opponent and kill unit in the process, and thus score gaining momentum in turn two. If you were bottom of turn one, typically you try to like you almost rarely take a double turn unless it's absolutely like you can just see the winning stroke of the game right at the gate, but more than likely than not, you're probably gonna want to push it to bottom of turn two, and same likewise, you have another opportunity to basically redo regaining momentum effectively. It's it's probably the, the best time to do gaining momentum is on turn two, potentially turn three, uh, it, depending on how conservative both players end up playing. But we kind of see what I'm trying to nail here, which is that timing is equally as important as like how easy the battle tactic is. And even though some may be easier uh, earlier in the game, they might not be the, the best timing for them. 
So you, you, know, you have to find that nice niche. Turn three, uh, if you haven't, you know, at this point, eye for an eye, if you haven't used it because you, uh, because you use game momentum on turn two or vice versa, you switch, you switch the roles. Turn four, you're coming into, now you're getting into kind of like where the game is basically settling. The, the things are dying. It's, we're going that, we're going to that, the late attrition game now, basically. Armies which have recursions are going to try to, you know, sneak away from, um, to primary points and so forth and so forth. But in terms of battle tactic, this is where board presence comes in super useful. Um, now, we talked about earlier, like, cunning maneuver. Uh, cunning maneuver being on turn one only because you won't have a better book tactic to do. Cunning maneuver is actually really good in turn four, assuming, you obviously, you have enough JCs to back it up with. But it's, it's, that's turn four and turn five tend to be battle tactics, which are no longer about necessarily taking the risk of gambling, like, aka, like, killing something. Uh, you want to take as many battle tactics which are more about board state. Like, can I score more objectives than my opponent? Can I have more units in like their territory? Or can I make three charges? Like, you're trying to reduce the amount of luck. You know, the three charges is a little bit of luck, but it is. It doesn't involve you. Like, it doesn't involve your opponent's dice rolls in that in that equation. You don't want to maximize those types of battle tactics towards the bottom half of the game. You don't want to have kill objective, kill battle tactics in turn five. Like you don't want that to be the only one left in your arsenal because you have so much reduced, uh, basically forces or potential power. It makes it very hard to basically gamble on these kill battle tactics because of uh, this. Thing. Now, if the game is completely one-sided and you're just blowing up your opponent, so it doesn't really matter at that point. But in terms of like tight games, like you're trying to sequence. Uh, both the amount of resources you have on the table, timing of those battle tactics, as well as knowing where your opponents are. And I, and I quoted earlier, or I mentioned earlier, Corn being, with Myrtleust being super problematic, Myrtleust wants to be used early in the game, as often as possible, to basically get the army closer to what it needs to do, also to potentially, you know, fix gaps uh, or... Uh, in their line for screens or whatever they need to do. It, it's also very good at locking units in combat uh, because if you get to, you know, in the late, you know, turn three and four, turn two and three when you're engaged in combat and you retreat, maybe like they're trying to murder us into another unit that prevents it from charging and so into something else, so forth and so forth. It gets, it's kind of a controlling ar uh, army. But the, the, the side effect of that happening is that if you're picking battle tactics which are about board control, in turn two, turn three, and he's just murder lusting on top of these things, and now you're finding yourself into your you pick the board board uh, board, uh, board control battle tactic, but you now have to kill things on top of that because of the murder less repositioning on top of objectives or locking the unit that you like. Let's say you pick like gaining momentum, uh, and your you know big nasty unit that needs to basically get to make it a sure thing to kill that unit you pick for gaining momentum you got merlusted by some other unit and now you're stuck in combat away and you have no way to reach that other unit then. now it's like well you have to depend on the rest of the army to kill that and that gets maybe a little bit more less dependent but so what i expunged earlier really helps it basically address some of these issues a little bit but you have to recognize that merlus is a threat immediately when you pick your before you pick your battle tactic. You have to think about like, okay, if I pick this battle tactic, what can he do to Merla to prevent me from achieving it? And the, the bigger Giga Brain play is <laughs> how do I position myself in the previous turn, instead of in this instant, to where Merla, uh, knowing what battle tactic I'm picking the next turn, so and a way that Merla won't really punish me uh, that drastically. It, it, it's all you know. Obviously, like even I have, I have issues even coming up with that kind of like foresight into situations in the games. But it is, you know, maximizing your battle tactics is once again it's about knowing where your army is sequentially in in the board and whatever turn it is. Knowing what your opponent army does, especially early on, more so than later on in the game, uh, and maximizing first. The generic easy battle tactic turn one, so you don't, you're not basically sacrificing anything else. Try not to use desecrate because it is 
super useful for the second bottom half of the game. Uh, and Nev try to focus on getting momentum turn two, I find I turn three, uh, then you know desecrate on turn four if you don't have anything else, but if you didn't do cunning maneuver, probably cunning maneuver turn four, uh, and desecrate turn uh, turn five. One of the things uh, I in my in my a lot of the lists I've been building around is around this double JC uh, split flank uh, uh, mechanic, where I'm trying to do in some missions where I'm afforded the ability to uh, to do lead the assault, which is you know basically taking two objectives wholly uh, within enemy territory, uh, and they have to be both contested. Uh, by Galatian champions and some of the missions have like this the no man's land is on the halfway point like you basically touch oh, sorry not no man's land the territories and touch each other and then there's two objectives and basically uh, straddling both territories and that's like that's one of the great ones to try to basically try to get lead the assault with uh, but like it's just basically it's a list design choice to open up that battle tactic as an early pick usually turn one <laughs> pick uh, if I can avoid it, because one of the reasons I was having an issue, for example, with corn, is that there wasn't a lot of turn one battle tactic you could do with corn. <laughs> so, and I didn't really want to use cunning maneuver if I can avoid it, because some missions make it impossible to use. So I had to go find a way to maximize the missions where cunning maneuver is no longer an option. So only lead the assault is an option left potentially. There's some missions where everything even that's important very hard. Uh, but it, it's, it is definitely minimizing that that gap. Okay, I think I've rambled uh, long enough. Sorry for the technical difficulty in the middle of the recording, um, but uh, I will post in the comments uh, kind of like a loose description of flow path, turn order, or what I think the best ideal situation of, of your uh, battle tactics should be. But you know, <laughs> if you're an army like that has just incredibly easy battle tactics, it doesn't necessarily change too much of the philosophy you want. You want to focus your kill ones on turn two and turn three as much as possible, and then your board state ones on turn four and five. It doesn't really change uh, that you have easier battle tactics to achieve than the GHB ones from that sequence in the world. But like you, it's the same problem you run into uh, is if you if you're you know starting to lose resources to kill things, you're probably unlikely you're gonna want to have kill battle tactics in the second half of the game. I hope uh, this was at least educational. I, I know a lot of my audience doesn't, it's probably you know, newer and then some are very advanced and they probably don't <laughs> need to hear this, but uh, you know, I'm trying to cover all the spectrum here, folks. Uh, and yes, for an opinion piece, I know that this was probably very tame, uh, but I, I, there's a lot of people who have very strong opinion about uh, the sequencing of battle tactics and how you should pick battle tactics. And, you know, I don't think they're wrong. I just I just prefer this this method, you know, this approach to it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and you can check out my Edenite video uh, that will be doing uh, that will be coming out the same day today, recovering this uh, kind of control melee Edenite list. Have a good, lovely Sunday, folks.